Greetings and welcome to Subnautica. It was a game put out by Unknown Worlds Entertainment back in 2014. I just picked it up today. I've done a little bit of playing. I was going to start recording my initial experience of it, but I had some recording issues, so I'm trying again. Um, I've gotten enough play under my belt to be familiar with the controls, but I haven't really experienced too much of the story. <coughs> um, it's an exploration uh, craft survival game, open world, and the unique part about it is it's set primarily underwater. <coughs> but you crash land on a dangerous alien planet, and you have to scavenge resources and manage your hunger and thirst to survive. But so far, I'm, I'm really enjoying this game, and if you all kind of like it, uh, watching me play it, just let me know in the comments and I'll continue the series. Taking a little bit to load in here. <clears throat> now this game doesn't autosave. You have to manually save. If you exit out without saving, uh, you basically don't have any save data at all. Uh, that was one of the problems I had with my initial recording is I had to step away from the computer so I exited out. When I came back, I was starting over from scratch. There goes our ship. <laughs> Nothing worse than a flying piece of metal when you're stuck in a chair. I really do like how the music ramps up when that happens. I like that little chime too. You have suffered minor head trauma. This is considered a nocturnal outcome. This PDA has now rebooted in emergency mode with one directive to keep you alive on an alien world. Please refer to the data bank for detailed survival advice. Good luck. Now this little tutorial message, I gotta close the PDA to get it to go away. And then they want me to use my hotkeys. Alright. Circuitry test failed, secondary systems offline, radio offline, distress signal broadcast failed, flotation devices deployed, hull integrity okay and our power cells are online. And we have, you can see at the top of the screen, 75 power, three power cells of 25 each. And you have a voice log here. You can replay any if you miss them for any reason. You can manage your screenshots here, manage your beacons here, and I have a hard time spotting the blue, so I'm gonna change mine to yellow. And as you see, we still have the fire extinguisher, and it's at 100 fuel even though we used it already. Uh, it lists all your blueprints here. And as you see, there are some we don't have complete. We have unknown ingredients for. And the data bank has all the useful information. Uh, it has a little start here message. If you're reading this, then you have survived an emergency evacuation of a capital class ship equipped with Altera technology. Congratulations, the hard part is over. Your PDA has automatically rebooted in emergency mode. This operating system has one directive, to keep you alive on a hostile alien world. If that is not possible, it will alert salvage teams to the location of your remains. It features full monitoring of vital signs for timely survival advice, blueprints for fabricating range of essential survival equipment, 
tailored to your environment. Onboard camera, microphone, and OCR technology for short-range situational analysis. Cross-compatibility with all Altera-compliant products. Your personal and work files have been encrypted and may be retrieved at a later date by a licensed engineer. Now they give us a little bit of an objective here with our survival checklist, administer first aid, take inventory of materials and supplies, survey the environment, and then construct necessary survival equipment, check your life pod for damage, repair as necessary, broadcast local distress signal, locate other survivors, find or construct a more permanent habitat, and basically wait for a rescue. And it says your PDA will override any of these steps because it takes your particular circumstances into account. And this just basically tells you you've lost 80% of the blueprints and have to uh, recover them somehow, either by scanning technology or downloading plans. And on our equipment, the handheld scanner explains that, like the blueprint acquisition. It'll record the physical parameters of scanned objects and add them to your uh, list and it can also break down damaged and otherwise useless devices into their base metals for salvage purposes. You can organize, uh, analyze organisms and analyze anything for medical including your step, self. Um, the medical kit fabricator here will start building another medical kit anytime you take one out it takes a while. You see it just gone up like 1%. It'll do its second percent in a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and use that one to top off. Even though these do about 50 points, so that was overkill. But Alright, my stocks. I have a couple of flares. Let's actually put those on hotkey 5. We don't need the fire extinguisher. And let's grab the water and some food and drink one of the waters. Secondary systems are damaged, our fabricator is functional, and our radio is damaged. So now let's survey the area. <clears throat> the Aurora suffered orbital hull failure. Cause unknown. Zero human life signs detected. And nothing but water in every direction. And that planet or moon is really booking it across the sky. So it has a fairly quick orbit. See, the sun is around here somewhere. And as you can see, it's moving fairly quickly too. So the day-night cycle here isn't going to be very long. Alright, so now I need to find resources because I need a scanner. So I need a battery and titanium. I need a repair tool. So I need titanium, cave sulfur, and silicone rubber. And to get those, I can get titanium from metal salvage I find, silicone rubber, I need creep vine seed clusters, and batteries, I need acid mushroom and copper core, copper ore. Um, so let's go down here. start exploring this lovely landscape. There's some metal salvage. Break limestone outcrop. That gave me titanium. Is there another one around here? Oxygen. Yeah, there at the bottom left, you can see my oxygen meter, my health meter, my hunger meter, and my thirst meter. 
creature egg. Alright, there's the acid mushrooms. I need a couple for a battery. I also need copper. And... I believe that was it. O2 is dropping pretty fast. That was a little painful. Not every life form around here is friendly. Let's grab some quartz since we're down here. Yeah, right now I can't really get away from those guys too well. So I'm going to take a little damage anytime one of them spots me. Here's some more limestone. Copper. Copper is an essential component of all powered equipment. Your probability of survival has just increased to unlikely, but plausible. Eat something. Let's go ahead and eat that nutrient block. Go back to this cave we were chased out of, because, yep, there's another limestone with more copper. Oh yeah, this thing spits out little bubbles of air, and your suit is equipped to extract it. So you can refill your tanks from these guys as they spit it out. As you see, it's now night. And a lot of these creatures are bioluminescent, which is nice. But it still can get pretty dark. Now these glowing seeds are the creep vine clusters we need. Life on this planet grows in unusually distinct and diverse ecological biomes. Further study recommended. New blueprint acquired. I got a new blueprint Oxen. from picking up the uh, creep vine seeds. As you see, they take a lot of space, so does the metal salvage. Alrighty, let's get back to our ship and do a little bit of crafting. make lubricant out of the creep mines now, but we need silicone rubber. Now that clears up some space because it goes from taking up four to taking up two with two rubber. Let's convert all of this salvage to titanium. It takes up the same amount of space. It goes from one piece that is four to four pieces that are one each. Let's see, make some glass. And make a battery. New blueprint acquired. Alright, new blueprint was the power cell, I believe. Yeah, it's just an upgraded battery. Now we can make an O2 tank. Gives us more breathable air. 
and fins to swim a little faster. The fabricator draws from available data to provide environment appropriate equipment using locally available materials. For your safety, this setting cannot be overridden. So let's make our scanner. The scanner can be used to synthesize blueprints from salvage technology and to record alien biological data. Make some more rubber. That gives us access to the repair tool once we get sulfur. We need another battery. Oh, we can make a survival knife now. Weapons were removed from standard survival blueprints following the massacre on Abraxas Prime. The knife remains the only exception. Alright, and the high capacity O2 tank is an upgrade from this one with silver, glass, and titanium. Now I'm actually, let's see, put the survival knife on one, the scanner on two. Not three. Yeah, let's put it on three. And I need more water. And I'll go ahead and get another med kit. Oh, it's 98% done. See, let's stash some of this stuff right now. I'm actually going to keep those titanium because I'm about to uh, make a backup O2 tank. Now it'll start out empty, so in order to fill it with air, I need to equip it. And that puts the one in my inventory is the one that was already full, so it has another 30 seconds. So if I start running low down below, I can swap tanks. And now that I have a knife, I can extract more resources from things. Uh, there are some things like this you can't pick up, but you can use the knife and get some materials out of it. And you can scan pretty much everything. Um, It'll let you know, like, it has some interesting information in this, like, uh, it says these you can reclaim for titanium. The coral, it'll tell you under assessment, it's used for bleach fabrication. Let's go ahead and fill this tank back up. And get back to scanning. Now, anything you haven't scanned, when you're looking at, you'll get this, uh... If you have your scanner in your hand, you'll get that item, but even if you don't have your scanner in your hand, down at the bottom right, you'll have a, hey, this can be scanned icon. Local radiation levels. Trend is consistent with damage to the Aurora's drive core sustained during Planet 4. Yeah, and a lot of these things, the flora in particular, don't really have uses. The acid mushroom can be used for batteries. Yeah, this doesn't really tell you much. But some of the information it'll tell you in the descriptive section can be useful uh, in the game. Yeah, this may aid in flotation of sunken objects. Because basically if I pull this guy off of here, that'll start to sink because they're actually keeping it afloat. Oh, he's not attached to it. There we go. Let's go up top and get our hair back. Scan a few more things. No practical applications. Assessment edible. You can basically grab these fish. 
new creature discovered. And when you do, it'll unlock the recipes for cooking them. And you can hotkey them and then release them back into the water if you want, which is useful at certain points. This lets you know, approach with caution, the acid pods it spits out can be repurposed. So you can actually, it lets you know you can actually grab them when it first spits them out. Let's give that a shot. I grabbed a couple. So yeah, I've got their gas pods in my inventory. Like I said, you scan almost anything, and this will let you know it's a source of titanium and copper. Salt. Cut creep vine with knife. Yeah, that's the part that lets you know the knife can give you more resources. Because in addition to being able to grab the seeds, I can now cut off sections of the creep vine, which are edible, and gave me a new blueprint, fiber mesh. Pathfinder tool. I think I got that from scanning it. Let's get a little bit more air and then scan this cluster of creep vines. They are separate from the vine itself. And I saw a fish I hadn't scanned down here. Come here, you. New creature discovered. New creature discovered. Let's see. So we've got the peeper, which is edible and has a high calorie count, and the hoverfish, which is also edible. And the creep vine scenes are vi uh, vital alien resource. Now, none of these live fish will actually decay or anything. They'll still be alive while they're in my inventory, even if I go to the surface or outside, into outside of the water. These things will stay alive, but as you can see, this has already started decomposing. This rots pretty quickly. But I can still use it for what I need to while it's rotten. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> Inedible but harmless. Table coral. Spoilable in computer chip fabrication. So I eventually need some of these. There's the other piece. Get back on it again. I just had it targeted a second ago. There it is. Right. 
titanium. More copper. Where was that cave at? Right here? Distancing that time because I ran fast enough. 30 seconds. Alright, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and swap tanks. So I can finish a little stuff down here. Yeah, they come out of sulfur plants. And that's where you get your cave sulfur. Sulfur deposits in the local cave systems. Sulfur is an essential component. Of didn't the get him scanned it before he detonated. Now what did that say? I wasn't paying attention. Detecting sulfur deposits in the local cave systems. Yeah, that's what I was grabbing out of the sulfur plant. All right. Actually, while I'm up here, swap back to my other tank to fill it up so that I have my spare again. And go back into that cave. sulfur from the ones that had already come out after me. More copper. Thirty seconds. Fill my oxygen while I scan this guy. Uh, air tanks are equipped to siphon oxygen from the water wherever possible. But yeah, it's the actual description that mentions that they filter carbon dioxide and expel the oxygen. That's why I said some of these descriptions are useful. More salt. I scanned you? Yeah, I've scanned you. I haven't scanned you. Edible and membrane has applications as a natural water filter. New creature discovered. Alien life forms may have unexpected applications. Utilizing alien resources is a proven survival strategy. Come here, you. Alrighty. Come here, you. Oh, I saw a silhouette of a fish I hadn't scanned. That one. discovered. Edible. So we've got some more cooked fish blueprints. An air bladder using the bladder fish. And filtered water using the bladder fish. I still haven't found any silver. 
So let's do a little bit more exploration. I think I got inventory space. I got one. Shuttle bugs. Necessary waste recycler. Presence may indicate nearby cave system. Gotta keep an eye out for those sulfur deposits with the suicidal fish in them. Oh, there. Sandstone. Lead, silver, and gold. Oxygen. I'm not going to make it. Let's go ahead and swap to our other oxygen tank. back to our base and offload some of this stuff. Actually, I could let go some of these fish go. Isn't he so cute? It looks more like a reptile than a fish. And despite that we're in air, it doesn't appear to be dying. Let's make the fiber mesh to get rid of those creep vine samples. Make some bleach. Bleach is an essential chemical used for cleaning wounds and purifying water. So now we can make disinfected water. Preparing the day's water ration ahead of time will help ensure against dehydration and eventual death. And we can make filtered water. And let's make an air bladder. Now the purified water gives you 30 H2O and you get two of them from the bleach. Filtered water only gives you 20, and you only get one from the uh, fish. So the disinfected water is the way to go. It just takes more resources. Salt and some coral. Let's see. Um, I need one of these. I don't need one, I mean two of the table coral. I don't need the gas pods right now. And I don't need the fiber mesh right now. Now, what all can I make? I need silver still to upgrade the tanks to high capacity. I need silicone rubber, which I'm about to make. Now I can make the uh, repair tool. See, I need a battery for the flashlight and copper wire for the pathfinder. I can make copper wire. How much copper do I have, though? Do I have two or three? I have three, so I can go ahead and make the copper wire. And that will make, get me... two cre uh, creep vine seeds away from that, which I have.
So now I have the Pathfinder tool, holographic Pathfinder di disc to map a way back out of caves. And I need a battery, so I need a couple of mushrooms from down here. I can make a flashlight. I'm starting to get hungry, so I'm going to cook one of these fish. Um, let's cook the peeper. I think the that's... fabricator cooks small organisms while disposing of the skeletal structure, bodily fluids, and internal organs, thus rendering them safe for human consumption. I think the uh, they're actually one of the best food sources. They do 32 food. Protein-rich eyeballs. There we go. Um, computer chip. What do I need for that? Copper wire. So I need more copper. I need silver. Yeah, I need about three more copper. And I need some silver. So let's see, we've got the repair tool finally. So I can go about fixing the ship. Lightboard secondary systems online. Running full environment diagnostic and outputting results to data bank. Well, it cleaned out most of the smoke. Alright, now it did a full environment diagnostic. To let us know it's an ocean planet. Oxygen nightmare atmosphere supports Leviathan class predators, water contaminated with high levels of foreign bacteria, and rescue is unlikely. Which reminds me, have I done a self scan yet? Self scan complete. Vital signs normal. Continuing to monitor. Alright, let's repair our radio. So basically, they're never coming. Um, let's see, where were we? Yeah, I need to get three more copper. And I can actually go ahead and cook this other peeper, I guess. Well fed. And let's go ahead and top off our health. And put the repair tool up because we no longer need it. And put that in our fourth slot. Now we need more copper, so we need more sandstone basically. That's limestone. Uh, uh, I meant limestone. Yeah, limestone or sandstone will have copper. One more copper. <laughs> A 
Lots of quartz when I need it down here. There's some sandstone. I might get some silver out of that. Yeah, yeah, stop looking at your new tool so I can look. Lead. Oxygen silver based wiring kits are an essential component of many habitat modules. I had a scan symbol when I was flying through there. back to our other tank, air it up, and go back down. Now something down here said it could be scanned. What was it? The veined nettle. Need a couple more acid mushrooms to make a battery. Still got inventory space. Creature egg. Advanced alien theories. Uh, this basically lets you know the eggs won't hatch on their own. Degradation of the auroras. Drive cool. May result in a quantum detonation. Continue to monitor. That's not good. And that, um, you need a habitat, I mean, a uh, specific module for your habitat to be able to hatch them. See, I needed another piece of this. Didn't I? Yeah, I've got assault. I need another piece of this. There we go. Oh, what did I need? I don't know the sea glide yet. I can make a waterproof locker. got one of those. Oh yes, I was making the computer chip, so I need copper wire. <clears throat> Excuse me, sneezing fit. Alright, so that is an advanced wiring kit. Uh, I needed... Where is it? The wiring kit, which is two silver, and a battery, which I have the materials for. So let's make another battery. Now any of these devices that use batteries, um, you can see their power level when you have them equipped. When they get down to zero, you can replace the battery. Or you can replace the battery before it gets down to zero. But just about all of this equipment that you make with batteries, you can replace them. Uh, let's see. I've got more copper. Cool. Let's go ahead and stash the copper and the lid. Uh, the titanium and the glass and the silicone rubber. I need one more silver. Actually, let's go ahead and get the glass back out so I can make, not the glass, the salt, so I can make more bleach. And make more water. And 
let's go see if we can't find another piece of silver somewhere. We're looking for sandstone. Um, you can find it in the cave sometimes. You can also find it over here in the kelp forest. Another creature egg right there. Uh, I'm not going to bother grabbing it right now. Oh, hello. Scan him. Almost done scanning you. Hold still. There we go. Now, this is another example. He's following me. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Another example of data I was talking about. It tells you useful things during... Um, here toward the start, it says, As with many predators, it may be possible to temporarily distract hungry stalkers by feeding them. And it doesn't mention that under the assessments. It just talks about how their teeth have applications. Um, <clears throat> the uh, By feeding them, basically that means if you have a fish in your hot bar. Let's put this in five. And they're coming after you. You can release the fish to them and feed them so they'll leave you alone. I'm going to grab another one of you, because you guys are cute. Oh, he just ate. He's okay. 30 seconds. And it also tells you in their description they're attracted to titanium. That's the reason they keep going after the scrap metal and playing with it. And also, that means that if you have your knife out, they'll make a beeline for you. Because that's shiny looking metal to them. So yeah, this going around with your knife out in this area gets their attention. Because he sees that shiny knife. Yeah, once I put the knife away, he just goes about again. Oh, and that symbol up in the right there that just popped up means I have a message. On the radio. Now let's see, I needed for the vehicle... Oh, I don't know what I need for it yet. Damn it. So I just need to keep finding copper. I mean, uh, silver. So I'm looking for sandstone. This mentions uh, more protective plants provide superior nesting grounds so they can get more nutrients from larger crash fish. So that means these things can get quite big, I imagine, later on in the depths. And we just witnessed an end of an eclipse. That big planet moved in front of the sun for a little bit. Explains why it was so dark down here. Now that they've detonated, let's see if there was any sandstone around here with them. I don't really need more sulfur right now. I've got plenty. Let's 
Let's go ahead and top off our tank. So we can keep looking for sandstone around here somewhere. There's some. Silver. That's what I needed. Back to our survival pod, life pod. I've got plenty of inventory space, but don't really need. Go ahead and clear. Thank you. Don't really need to uh, pick up anymore right now. Life pod 3, uploading our coordinates. We're plugging some holes in our emergency sea glide, so if we're late for the rendezvous, don't panic. Also, don't go home without us. Seriously. 3, out. Signal location uploaded to PDA. Alright, I need the computer chip. I need the battery I've already got. Uh, and that's going to make the... Uh, Oh, I need the other silver that I have in there. There it is. That will allow me to make the wiring kit. So now I can make the habitat builder. And that should be the last piece of equipment I can make or I need right now. The builder tool is designed to construct habitats capable of withstanding extreme environmental conditions. Let's see where those coordinates are. They are 306 meters that way. They're in the shallows. Their sea glide is damaged. So let's see. Before I head that way, Yep, we've been going for 51 minutes. Uh, let's go ahead and save. And call this an episode. So if you all are interested in seeing this series continue, just let me know in the comments. Leave a like. Uh, thank you all for watching, and hopefully we'll see you next time.